Welcome to Heart of a Shepherd. We are in the Acts of the Apostles. Our scripture reading today is Acts chapter 2 and chapter 3. This is the first of two daily Bible studies from the Heart of a Shepherd. Well, we are again in Acts chapter 2. I do invite you to open your Bible with me there. And I've titled the devotional, The Filling and Power of of the Holy Spirit. I do invite you, turn with me to Acts chapter 2, and let's go through the scriptures together today. Well, a little bit of the background. After Jesus ascended to heaven, we read that the disciples returned to an upper room in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 1 and verse 13. Well, there they continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his, that is, the brethren of our Savior. Well, we read, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, and there were about 120 in the room. And he stated in Acts chapter 1, beginning in verse 16 through 20, Peter stated that Judas the traitor should be replaced by another, by another man. Well, two men were put forward who fulfilled the qualifications of having been with Jesus from the beginning, from the baptism of John, and secondly, and were a witness of Jesus' resurrection. Now, throughout the centuries, there has been a debate regarding Matthias' appointment, the one that was finally chosen in verse 28. And so there's some that question if the disciples should have waited for the Holy Spirit to be imparted to them on the day of Pentecost before filling Judas' apostleship. And yet, uh, I would note that we read in verses 24 through 26 that they prayed for the Lord's leading and that they were in accord. And thus, the lot we read, verse 26, fell upon Matthias, who was numbered with the 11 apostles. And so now we return to the 12. Now, Acts chapter 2, we begin reading in verse 1, that 50 days following the Passover and Christ's sacrificial death on the cross, which was the day of Pentecost, was fully come. So 50 days after the Passover. Now we find the disciples and the followers of Christ were still gathered all with one accord in one place. And then we read in verse 2, when suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared, and we read in verse 3, uh, unto them cloven or dividing, or a division, or many tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Now, here we have the word tongues, and in its true meaning, it means languages. And so, the Holy Spirit comes and rests upon and indwells the believers that were in that room. And they were given the gift of being able to speak in other languages. Now, there's much more that we could write and read concerning the events of Acts chapter 2. But Christ's promise of the spirit of truth that was made in John chapter 14 finally came to pass. You might remember that Christ said that the Spirit of Truth would come and he would bring comfort. He would be the comforter and would dwell in the disciples. Now, he also promised in John 14 and verse 26 that the Holy Ghost shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, the sudden entrance of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, we read, was like a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And we read in verse 2, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now, the visible effect of the presence of the Holy Ghost was, again, as I have said, like cloven tongues, like as a fire. That is, implying multiple languages and the fire being a symbol of, of purity. 
Now, in the Old Testament, you might remember as we studied, the Holy Spirit's presence was temporal and was given by God to empower special servants. For instance, the Holy Spirit was given to Gideon and he had boldness. The Holy Spirit empowered Samson. The Holy Spirit granted wisdom to David and gave foresight and the word of God to the prophets. And so now, starting at Pentecost, we find that all believers were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues, that is, other languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance in verse 4. Now, the Holy Spirit then, rather than visiting temporarily, now came to abide and indwell the heart of every believer. Well, again, so much more might be said regarding the extraordinary events recorded in Acts 2, but I will address those at a later time. I do want to address, though, the gift of speaking, and I'll remind you that we are talking about languages here. And as we'll see when we study the first uh, Corinthians and second Corinthians, that it became a problem in the early church. Guidelines were given, but again, not the gibberish of our day that people call speaking in tongues. These were valid languages. Then finally, some closing thoughts from Acts 2. Now, the reality of Christ being crucified for sin, raised from the dead, and promising to return transformed the lives of his disciples. Now, though they did not lose their sinful nature, nevertheless, they were transformed as they matured past self-centered ways of arguing about who would be the greatest. You see, they were now the ministers or the servants of the Lord, and they were called to be his witnesses. And so I close with a lesson, and it is this. Conflicts and divisions cease when believers remember the main thing is to preach Christ crucified, risen, and returning. Now, James believed to have been the brother of Jesus, asked in his epistle to the early church these words, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? James chapter 4, verse 1. So anytime there's a division and fighting among people that profess to be believers, you can be sure that the Holy Ghost is being quenched. Well, understanding that Christ promised to return, but not knowing the hour, James encouraged believers, be also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not, that is, stop complaining and grumbling. Grudge not one another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. You and I will find no place for grudges and complaints when we obey the Lord and live in light of his imminent return and judgment. Well, that concludes the first of two video devotionals for today. And so I invite you to stay tuned for Acts chapter 3. God bless and bye-bye.